Hello again everybody and welcome back to the Jank Lab. I'm Jimmy the Mad Scientist and in today's video I'm going to show you the deck that I submitted to Wreck and Roll a few weeks ago. Uh, they played it in a series of videos and uh, I'm going to go ahead and dedicate this video to them. I got my Wreck and Roll shirt on and I'm raring to go so I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, so we're going to take a look at the characters, and the first character that we'll look at is the card that this deck is based around, and that is Raider Aimless. Uh, in bot mode, he has a natural tough three. So on defense, he's going to be flipping five cards, which, you know, his zero defense is a little bit deceptive because with those five cards, um, you're going to be able to withstand, you know, quite a bit of damage with him. But the reason why he's in there is because he's a battle master. So when he's KO'd, he becomes a weapon. And in weapon mode, he has an ability that says when the upgraded character attacks and you flip at least three blue icons, do three damage to the defender. Um, that's a really incredible ability. You know, free damage is free damage, and being able to bypass armor is also great. Um, this also gives our characters plus three attack, and if this would leave the battlefield, we'd put this into the KO area instead. So, you know, I do see Aimless a lot. Um, in blue decks. Uh, he's a very strong character. Um, you know, turning into a plus three weapon is great. Um, and his ability does trigger in those decks. You know, you have white icons, you have cards that have two blue icons, so it does trigger, but I thought, why not try to build a deck that almost guarantees that he triggers? So that's the idea behind the deck. And the first character that I thought of uh, for Aimless is Demolisher. And in alt mode, Demolisher says, when you flip to this mode, you draw a card for each of your other tanks. Well, spoiler alert, there are no other tanks in this deck. The reason we're using Demolisher is for his bot mode ability. And it says, when this is attacking, flip extra battle cards equal to his defense. So not only are you getting the two that you normally get, but you will be flipping four additional cards. So, you know, flipping six cards, Raider Aimless is almost guaranteed to trigger. So that's why Demolisher's in the deck. And the next character uh, is very similar in the way that he operates with Aimless, and that is Barrage. And we'll look at his bot mode ability first because that's really the reason why he's in here. And it says, while this is attacking a damaged enemy, this has bold too. So, you know, it's weird to have a character with bold in a deck that has primarily blue icons in it. Um, but because of the way that Aimless works, you know, we're going to be flipping two additional cards, which means we'll have at least four cards that we're flipping. Raider Aimless is almost guaranteed to um, trigger in that scenario as well. But his alt mode ability will come into play uh, a little bit in this deck. And what it says is, when you flip to this mode, one of your characters gets pierced two until end of turn. So, you know, we're a blue deck, and we want to try to deal as much guaranteed damage as possible, so flipping Barrage to alt mode um, is never a bad idea when you need to guarantee at least, you know, that two damage. And the fourth character was actually Flame War when I first built this deck. And after talking with Joe from Wreck and Roll and, you know, looking at his notes uh, that he gave me after, you know, he played the deck, um, there was a character that he mentioned that I thought would fit really well in the deck, and it kind of sets up for a cool sideboard strategy that we'll go over later, but uh, that character is Kickback. And in alt mode, uh, he has an ability that says, when this damage is an enemy, repair one damage from one of your Insecticons. So obviously Kickback is an Insecticon, and Barrage is an Insecticon. So, you know, maybe we can get a little bit of extra healing, you know, in um, with blue decks. That's really good. Um, but we're not going to really rely on that ability. What we're going to be using him for is his bot mode ability. And it says when this is attacking, flip two more battle cards for each other Insecticon you begin the game with. Now, I know that we only have two Insecticons, 
but he's going to be flipping at least four cards, which again is very good for helping us trigger aimless. Um, also, when aimless, you know, in weapon mode is on kickback as well as being on, you know, demolisher, we get three attack damage out of that. So flipping those extra cards, there's a really good possibility that we're going to be flipping uh, black icons. So we're going to be getting additional uh, pierce out of that as well. So kickback, you know, wasn't really in my mind when I first started building this deck, but Joe really, you know, brought this character uh, into light for me. Okay, so that is the starting team. Uh, now let's go ahead and take a look at the battle cards. Okay, so the first battle cards we're going to look at are the cards that are going to help us deal damage. And the first card that we'll look at is Armed Hovercraft. Uh, it's an upgrade weapon with a blue icon that reads, when you put this on a ranged character, do one damage to each enemy. And it also gives us plus one attack. Uh, this is just really strong. Um, you know, we want to make sure that we're going to be attacking with Barrage into a damaged enemy character. And by playing Armed Hovercraft, you know, we're going to be putting one damage on everybody. So no matter who Barrage is going to be attacking into, uh, they're going to be damaged. Um, we do have um, three characters in our deck that have ranged modes. Um, so we're going to get plenty of use out of this card. Um, so I put three copies of Armed Hovercraft in the deck. Uh, the next upgrade, which works similarly but not quite as powerful, is Energon Slingshot. Uh, it's an upgrade weapon as well that has a blue icon that reads, when you put this on a melee character, do one damage to an enemy. And it also gives us plus one attack. So, you know, while not as powerful as Armed Hovercraft, um, this will help us ensure that, you know, Barrage is going to be attacking into a damaged um, character. Um, but because I'm trying to limit the deck to 40 cards, I just put two copies of Energon Slingshot in the deck. Now, Energon Slingshot is actually better once we you know, use our sideboard strategy, which we will go over later. Now, the next cards are, you know, they're not going to be giving us any direct damage, but they will help us, you know, get some guaranteed damage while we're attacking. And the first one we'll look at is Laser Cutlass. And it's an upgrade weapon with a blue icon that says we can put this on characters that have seven stars or fewer. So, you know, all of our characters are seven stars or fewer, so we can put this on everybody. Um, but it gives us plus one attack and it gives us pierce three. So, you know, this is just a strong card in this deck. You know, it can be used on all of our characters and pierce three is no joke. So I went ahead and just put two copies of Laser Cutlass in the deck. Um, we do have a lot of weapons in this deck. Um, and, you know, while having pierce three is, is great, um, we really would much rather be playing Armed Hovercraft or uh, Energon Slingshot. So I just put two copies of Laser Cutlass in the deck. Uh, another card that's going to help us do Pierce against Autobots is Scoundrel's Blaster. Uh, it's an upgrade weapon with a blue and a green icon so that we can grab this while we are battling. Um, and it says put on Decepticons only. And of course, you know, all of our characters are Decepticons, so we can put this on anyone. And it says, while the upgraded character is attacking an Autobot, it has Pierce 2. And it also gives us plus 2 attack. So, you know, this is really good against Autobots in general. Um, but um, the plus 2 attack is really going to come in handy against orange decks where, you know, the opponent doesn't really care how much armor they have. And they don't have much, you know, blue, if any, in their decks. So that plus 2 attack is going to come in handy in those situations. But... Because it does have a green icon, I just put two copies of Scoundrel's Blaster in the deck. And the last card, which wasn't in the original deck, and it wasn't in the deck list that Joe gave me um, for his updates, um, but I've been playtesting a little bit with this, with this card, and it works really well in conjunction with Demolisher and Barrage, um, especially against orange decks where we want to try to you know, deal a ton of damage in one swing if we can, and that is inverted. Uh, it's an upgrade utility that has a white and a green icon, so again, we can grab this when we're battling, um, but it reads, when the upgraded character is battling, each orange you flip becomes a blue, and each blue you flip becomes an orange. So because of all the blue in our deck, you know, we're going to be, you know, when we're playing this, we're going to be flipping basically orange, 
at that point. Now, the reason why this is good against uh, other orange decks is because, you know, again, they don't care about what their armor is, and we want to try to deal as much damage as possible in some situations to hopefully knock out uh, the opponent's uh, characters. And, you know, our deck strategy is, you know, basically a pierce strategy, which doesn't work nearly as well against orange decks as it does against blue decks. So I figured that, you know, I kind of wanted an out against those blue, or excuse me, against those orange decks. Um, and I just felt that inverted was really, really strong. And it has been playtesting very well. Um, but because it has a green icon, I just put two copies of inverted in the deck. Okay, so those are the upgrades that are going to help us deal damage. Now let's take a look at the actions that are going to help us deal damage. And the first action that we'll look at is marksmanship. Uh, it's an action with a blue icon that says if you have a ranged character on the battlefield, do two damage to an enemy in bot mode. So obviously, you know, this is a game of transforming robots and we're going to be having opponents characters that are going to be in bot mode. So, you know, two damage on a card that also has a blue icon is incredible. And like I said, we have three characters that um, have a ranged mode, so we're going to have plenty of opportunities to play this. So I put three copies of Marksmanship in the deck. Uh, the next card is Underhanded Tactics. And it's an action that has a blue icon that says do one damage to an enemy. If it's KO'd this way, repair one damage from one of your Decepticons. Now, you know, this is basically the blue version of Zap. Um, and it's really cool because, you know, any free damage that we have on cards with blue icons is really great regardless of how much damage it is. You know, one damage could mean the difference between, you know, knocking out a character or having to attack into that character. Um, and this also has a possibility of repairing our guys. Not that we're, you know, really relying on that. Um, but, you know, this is just a really cool card. Um, but I only put two copies of Underhanded Tactics in the deck, obviously because, you know, I want to keep it to 40. The next card is Frag Toss. It's an action with a white icon that says your opponent chooses one of their characters and does one damage to it. If your starting team was only Decepticons, which it is, your opponent does one more damage to the chosen character. So this doesn't work as well against decks that use uh, Battle Masters, you know, because, you know, they want their Battle Masters to get knocked out. So, you know, those Battle Masters will inevitably take, you know, that two damage. But, you know, there's plenty of decks out there that don't have Battle Masters. And, you know, free damage is free damage. And we also needed, you know, a couple more white cards in the deck um, just so that we can um, flip some additional cards um, with the absence of Flame War now. So um, I just put two copies in, though, uh, because it's, you know, a fairly situational card. Um, and we don't want to be using it against those um, Battle Masters. Uh, the next card is The Bigger They Are. Uh, it's an action with a blue icon that says one of your characters gets plus two attack until end of turn. While it's attacking an enemy this turn that has more stars than it, it gets pierced four. All of our characters are seven stars or less. And, you know, it's kind of difficult to use cards like this um, in regards to, you know, the star count because you don't know if the opponent's characters are going to have, you know, more or less stars than you. Um, but because we have so many characters that have very few stars, um, this is just, you know, just a strong addition to the deck. Um, of course, we're going to be going up against other four wide decks or five or six wide decks. Um, so in those situations, it's probably just going to be a plus two attack. So that's why I only added two copies um, because, you know, there are a lot of four wide decks out there. And the last action that we're going to look at that's going to help us deal damage is Steady Shot. And it's an action with a black and a blue icon, so when we flip this, our character is going to get Pierce 1. Um, but it's an action that says one of your characters gets plus 2 attack until end of turn. Uh, this card's not really great against blue decks, but it's really strong against orange decks, because the more damage we have uh, on our characters, um, and you know the characters that our opponents have don't really have much armor um, in most situations, and they're not going to be flipping blue. So, you know, we want to try to do as much static damage against those orange decks as possible. So I went ahead and put three copies of Steady Shot in the deck. Okay, so those are all of our battle cards that are going to help us deal damage. Now let's just take a look at the rest of the deck. 
Now, the rest of the deck is just basically, you know, cards that are just going to help our situation. Um, not, you know, really important. Um, there are a couple that are really important, but um, these are just really strong cards for this particular deck. And the first one we'll look at is Smoke Cloak. Uh, it's an upgrade armor with a black and a blue icon. So again, we're going to be uh, getting Pierce 1 on our characters when we flip this uh, during battling. Um, but it gives our character tough one. And, you know, we do want to try to mitigate some damage. You know, the less damage we take, obviously, the better off we are. Um, but this is really just kind of, you know, in here in case we do need to survive just a little bit longer. Um, not overly important to play this on our characters. We want to be playing our, our weapons primarily. But, you know, in those situations where we do need the extra armor, we do have this. And it has a black icon. So I put three copies of Smoke Cloak in the deck. Uh, the next card we'll look at is Security Checkpoint. And it's an action with two blue icons that reads, each player reveals their hand and scraps all upgrades from it. Uh, the two blue icons is really the reason it's in here. You know, it's going to help us uh, trigger Aimless um, in those situations where we're attacking with a character that doesn't flip additional cards. Um, but there will be times where we play this as an action um, you know, if we know that our opponent is upgrade heavy um, or we don't have any upgrades in our hand, uh, we can go ahead and play this and hopefully, you know, snag a couple cards out of our opponent's hand. Um, but because it has two blue icons, we put three copies of Security Checkpoint in the deck. And the other card that has two blue icons is Handheld Blaster. Uh, it's an upgrade weapon that gives our character bold one. And we don't necessarily want to play this as a weapon, um, in this deck, but we do have black icons and we do have inverted. So, you know, having an additional bold when we don't have any other, you know, good option as far as playing a weapon from our hand, uh, we can go ahead and play this. Um, it does work pretty well in conjunction with um, inverted, but, you know, it's just bold one. Um, we have this in here for the two blue icons, but because it does have two blue icons, we put three copies of handheld blaster in the deck. Now, the next couple cards are actually really cool. Um, it's going to help us make sure that, you know, our opponent is going to be attacking into Aimless because we want him to be knocked out first. And the first card is Bravery. Uh, it's an upgrade utility with a blue icon that gives our character Brave. So we slap this on Aimless and the opponent has to attack into him. Now, of course, there is upgrade, you know, destruction in this deck or in, uh, in the game. So we don't want to you know, really bank on this, um, especially after sideboarding. You know, if our opponent sees th that we're playing this on aimless, they're going to be like, okay, well, I need to bring in my vaporizers or my ramming speeds or what have you um, to get rid of this. But um, we only really want to play this one time per game. Um, there may be some situations where we play this on one of our other characters, but I just put two copies in the deck because we really want to play this primarily on aimless, and we don't want to see too many copies of it. And the next card is Heroism, and it's an upgrade utility as well that gives us um, a blue icon for the deck. And it says, if any of your other characters would take attack damage, instead the upgraded character takes that damage. Now, it works similarly to Bravery. Um, we can throw this on Aimless, and regardless of who else is taking damage, um, the damage is going to be transferred to Aimless. But... There is another situation where we can use these two cards in conjunction with each other. And, you know, let's say that we put Bravery on Demolisher because, you know, he has naturally high defense. And, you know, let's just say that we have a Smoke Cloak on him as well. You know, he's going to be soaking a lot of damage, but he doesn't have a lot of health. So let's say we put Bravery on uh, Demolisher so that he could be, you know, soaking the damage and negating damage but we put heroism on somebody else so that they would take what little damage that uh, Demolisher would be receiving. Um, that's actually a really cool combination. I've used it um, several times um, after changing the deck and putting this in. Um, this was a recommendation by Joe, and it's really panning out. Now, the next card is pretty important to the deck. Um, I can't, you know, can't say enough about how much utility this uh, card adds to the deck. And because we have a Battle Master, we are going to be playing Quartermaster. Uh, it's an action with a white icon that says, choose one. 
move an upgrade from one of your characters to another one. Or put a Battlemaster upgrade from your KO area onto one of your characters. So Aimless is the focus of the deck. And we want to make sure that Aimless stays on the table. And we want to make sure that Aimless is being used as often as possible. This just fits that bill perfectly. Um, you know, we can move Aimless from one character to another so that we can, you know, get multiple triggers out of him from multiple attacks. Um, or if he gets scrapped, um, we can go grab him and put him back on one of our characters. This is a three of. This is a no-brainer, no questions asked. Great card. And the last card that we'll look at is Pep Talk. Uh, it's an action with a blue icon that draws us two cards. Um, it never hurts to have a card like this in the deck. Um, you know, if we don't have the cards in our hand that we that we need, or you know, we're trying to draw into that last armed hovercraft or what have you to you know knock out you know our opponent's characters. You know, we need something that will help us do that. Um, but we only had two cards remaining in the deck. So I just put two copies of Pep Talk in the deck. Okay, so that is the main deck. And now we're going to take a look at the sideboard. So the sideboard strategy is kind of cool um, in the way that the rest of the deck works. Um, but the sideboard character that I put in the sideboard is Chop Shop from Wave 1. And in bot mode, he has an ability that is really sick in this deck. And it says, when this attacks, you may move an upgrade from one of your other characters to this one. So using him, we're going to have to take out somebody who is six stars or more. So we don't really want to take out Aimless because Aimless is the main focus of the deck. And Barrage is just a little bit too good to take out. So Chop Shop is going to be replacing Demolisher which is kind of cool because then we have three Insecticons in the deck, which the sideboard actually plays on that. But also, on alt mode, he has an ability that says, when you flip to this mode, scrap all upgrades on this character. For each one scrapped this way, draw a card and repair one damage from one of your Insecticons. So this is coming in basically against um, other blue decks that are trying to pierce you to death. Um, if we try to bring him in against orange decks, he's he's just going to go down. And the extra healing's not going to come into play very much because of just the sheer amount of damage that orange decks do. Um, but being able to repair our Insecticons um, really hurts Pierce decks. So that's why he's in the, um, in the sideboard. Really, primarily for this ability, but both abilities are really, really great. And to kind of show you the card from the main deck that I'm using him with, and I do have one copy in the sideboard. Uh, it's Energon Slingshot. Um, again, it's an upgrade weapon that says when you put this on a melee character, you do one damage to an enemy. So with Chop Shop, you know, his bot mode ability, we play this on one of our characters, we do one damage to somebody. We attack with Chop Shop, we bring it over to Chop Shop, he does one, he does one damage to somebody. So this is just a really cool interaction. Um, and similarly, um, because we are an all blue deck and we kind of need a way to deal with, you know, opposing armors, you know, just so that we can try to deal some damage naturally, um, we're going to put drill arms in the deck. And it's an upgrade weapon with a blue icon that says when you put this on a character, scrap an enemy armor. If you can't, draw a card. Um, it also gives us plus one attack. So uh, this is really cool. Again, it's a blue deck. You know, we want blue icons, but, you know, when we play this on a character, we either get rid of an armor or we draw a card. And then when we attack with Chop Shop, we can transfer it over and do the same thing again. So I went ahead and put three copies of Drill Arms in the sideboard. Uh, the next card is really going to help us against orange decks. And uh, the guys from Wreck and Roll have really turned me on to this card in sideboards um, for blue decks in case I go up against those orange decks. And that is Grenade Launcher. Uh, it's an upgrade weapon with an orange icon. I know that doesn't really fit with, you know, the blue theme, but um, this gives us plus four attack for our character, which is really great. The more damage we can do to our opponent, um, especially against orange decks, uh, the better off we are. Um, but of course, after this um, character attacks, we have to scrap this card, which, you know, that's not really that big of a deal because we're going to be doing more damage to our opponent 
theoretically than they are to us because we are a blue deck. Um, but having plus four attack is no joke, especially in conjunction with inverted. But the last card, which I thought was just really fun, uh, really cool. Um, and this was a last minute ad because, you know, I changed the characters in the deck slightly. And I've been playing with this card in some of my decks um, in preparation for Wave 4. And it's been really stellar. And that is Swarm. Um, again, it's an action with a orange icon, which doesn't really fit, but... It says you flip a battle card for each Insecticon you begin the game with. We have three Insecticons with Chop Chop on the table. So for each orange you flip, your opponent chooses one of their characters and does one damage to it. For each blue you flip, repair one damage from one of your characters. So again, this is primarily coming in against blue decks because they're trying to pierce you to death. Um, but, you know, if you play this and you flip three cards and, you know, you flip blue, blue, double blue, you're going to be healing for four off of one of your guys. Um, and then let's say that you, you know, flip chop shop and you, um, you know, you scrap two upgrades. That's another two health. And then you attack in with kickback and alt mode and you do damage. That's another health. So we're going to be healing quite a bit against those blue pierce decks. I went ahead and put three copies of Swarm in the deck. I know, weird, but it's fun. Trust me, it's fun. So that is the sideboard. And again, I'm dedicating this video to Wreck and Roll. I can't thank them enough for everything that they've done. Um, you know, I'm a huge supporter of theirs. And um, if you haven't supported their Patreon, please do that. Um, also, they have really awesome t-shirts. This one's really comfy. And... <laughs> Um, I recommend the t-shirts as well, but thanks again, Wreck and Roll, um, and especially Joe for, you know, playtesting the deck, playing the deck on, on their, uh, on their videos and, um, making the, you know, necessary changes. Um, the deck works a lot better now because you, uh, changed the deck. So, but if you liked the video, please like, and subscribe. And until next time, take care.